Hello everyone, this is Matt Dollar, and I'm back with round number three at the Ham and Hog Classic. I'm leading the tournament at 21 under par, Cody Britton at minus 19. Isaac Robinson and Dustin Perry, both of Team Prodigy, are tied at 16 under. And we'll start on hole number one. Still the greatest tradition of every sports tournament, the two minute start yelling. It's fun. <laughs> Always reminds me of the 101 Dalmatians, <coughs> where the dogs call from house to house to house to house, they just keep passing it on. So hole one has moved over into the right position, which is about 50 or 60 feet further right than it was uh, yesterday. So I'm going with the Moonshine Spark, I'm going to go with the Thummer, try to play it tight to that tree line. Oh. Oh. Just like that. I myself. So Cody will be up second. As you can see, it's early in the morning, but Cody's already sweating. That's because it's like a million degrees out here. The humidity is just off the charts. Uh, the actual temperature, I believe, was around 90. So he's going with the backhand, which is really tough to get a backhand at this pin. He goes in a little early, hits the tree. Most of the locals will throw a sidearm on this hole, or a thumber. Isaac's also going to try a backhand. Be around it. This was a little wider than Cody's, but it's still caught one of the last trees on the edge of uh, that corner. So Dustin's going to step up and throw himself a forehand. Very smooth yeah, forehand. Yeah, skip ace. Give him the hole. That was a beautiful looking shot from Dustin. and that had to be close to acing the basket. So Isaac kicked a little left, and he's in like a little pencil know, forest kind of, but there was a very nice upshot to get himself out of there. Good forehand upshot. Should have just went with that forehand off the tee and parked it. You don't see his sidearm much, but it's pretty good. So Cody's got a long look. He's just going to try and chip it up, I assume. And he does. So that's just a little bit of work for his par. Dustin and I both put our drives pretty close. Actually, Dustin's in that bush just to the right of Cody there. And here's where my spark ended up. Putting with the classic soft judge. And Dustin bounces one in there. So Dustin and Dollar with twos. The other yeah, yeah. boys with threes, and we move on to hole number two. That tough par four that's even tougher to film. So hole number two moved into a left position today. I actually didn't remember that when I was throwing it. So I got down there. Oh, no. So I went with that sidearm uh, with the hatchet that's supposed to turn into a roller, but I turned it just a hair early. And apparently that shot's popular because I saw several other people throwing it, including Dustin Perry here. Dustin goes wide and actually misses the gap that I aim at, but... He does hit a gap, and with that angle he had, he went a long way. He would actually be putting for a two uh, in the right pin position where it was for rounds one and two, which is incredible. So Cody lines up a hyzer. The hyzer route is definitely the, mo uh, the more preferred route for this pin placement because if you throw the hyzer and land in the middle of the fairway, you have a pretty straight shot. Kind of a tunnel shot, but definitely doable. Cody went just a little deep and he caught a tree on the edge of the fairway and kicked him hard right into the woods. So that's not gonna be an easy place um, to try and get out of. Isaac also takes the hyzer out, but he throws it perfectly. Nice shot. Roller, if it works. There's the basket up there. And there's Cody. He's stuck in the woods to the right. 
the left hand side of the screen that's Cody's caddy Timmy Wyke they both have the same home course which is Central Park up in Cumming Georgia just north of Atlanta so Cody's trying to go big here it looks like with some kind of flex shot out of there might should have chosen a safer shot because really pinned him in and now he just had to throw a forehand roller to try and get out and it rolled back in there too so my shot uh, once it caught that tree it really turned hard left so I'm kind of stuck in here there was really no good shot there's my buddy Chad Yates if you remember him from one of the other videos he's over there putting on hole number six so I'm looking for something. I'm holding a hatchet in my hands, thinking maybe I could find a tomahawk line. Uh, but there really was nothing, so I ended up settling for a thumber cut roller from a knee. And I gotta be honest, this shot worked out as good as I could have hoped for it to. Uh, you know, it doesn't get me up there on the green, but it gets me an easy par and a really long look at a birdie, so. Here's Isaac Robinson. And he will play his second shot yes, just uh, as perfect as his first shot. Great job by Isaac. Cody's having to go with another forehand roller, so that's back to back forehand rollers. So here's Dustin. His roller went way up there. If you see that yellow rock on the left hand side of your screen, that is the pin placement from yesterday. So Dustin will be putting on that one, the harder of the two pins. He's actually able to give it a bit on this one. So it'll be an easy birdie for Dustin. I've got about 50 or 60 feet, and it's uphill. It's going to be tough to get this one high enough, going with the judge. Gave it a pretty good line, just couldn't quite get the height. So Cody has got himself into the left side of the woods now. At least he's on the edge. And he will have a putt, but it's for a five. It's not an easy putt. If he misses this one, he'll be looking at a double bogey. Good bid from Cody, but not able to put it in. Isaac's shot actually slid a little further than I thought. He had a little tricky putt between those trees, but he nails it in there for his birdie. Dustin gets his birdie too. And I'll settle for a par while Cody will take a double bogey. We move on to hole number three. If you remember from rounds one and two, it was in the straight position. Just a nice little short downhill hole but it has moved about 40 or 50 feet to the left. The trick to this one is to have it not hyzer, um, have it not hyzer and early, and at the same time, if you throw the more legitimate shot, then you usually go deep. Yes, sir. Isaac was gonna go pretty deep right there, but he hit the tree just left past the basket. It should knock him down for an easy birdie. I'm going with the soft Cenus. The trick to this one is to throw it really soft. You gotta have nice touch. You don't want to hyzer in early, but you still gotta throw it soft if you don't want to go deep. Kind of like you want to go throw it straight, get all the way down there, then have it lose all its speed and die completely left. That basket's down there somewhere, I promise. So here's Isaac, he hit one of those trees right there. Still has a little bit of work to do. Yeah, come on. No problem for him. That kid is a great putter. He's got a really good shot at winning Am Worlds this year, I think, if he plays his game. He could be playing in one of the junior divisions, but he's gonna play advanced. So we had a star frame on hole number three. We move on to hole four. 
which is that hard left turn. Uh, tricky hole. And another tricky hole to film. So Scott, our cameraman today, decided he would like to try it from halfway down the fairway. So he is right at the very right hand edge of the turn. So we got Dustin going to throw first. This pin moved also, so it was up on the left side of the hill. Now it moved probably about 50 feet deeper into the woods. Dustin took it just a hair too tight and catches that tree. You don't want to take it as tight on uh, this one when you're trying to get to this location. When you're going to the short location, you really have to take it tight. There's the basket back there. Isaac throws a good shot. That'll put him probably 50 feet short. I'm going with the defender. And I skip it right up into the green. I was going to throw the pain. That was my game plan, was to stick to the mid-range and throw it just like I've been throwing it. But I decided to play aggressive and go for my birdie and just threw the defender and pretended I was throwing the exact same line. And it worked out really good. Cody goes a bit wide. Looks like he's having to throw another forehand roller. This has got to be the most forehand rollers I've ever seen Cody throw. Great shot. Mm, yes, sir. Heck yeah, Beautiful dude. shot from Cody to roll through there. Expertly played. I'm so Isaac's got a Probably 40 or so. 50 footer. It's on. Oh, and he almost makes it. Great bid from Isaac. Dustin taps in for his par. As does Isaac. And Cody was able to save his. I'm just going to tap it on in there for a birdie. And we'll move on to hole number five. Holes five, six, and seven do not change, uh, or did not change for this tournament. So they are all in the same positions as yesterday. I'm going to go forehand with the defender. And I remember finding out that I had still not moved my birdie bag back into my, uh, my disc golf bag that I was carrying this weekend. And these next few holes, I'm going to have a lot of trouble getting a grip on the disc. I'm trying uh, the crushed gravel around the tees and I was trying the mulch but neither was working pulled that one just a hair wide so kicks me down in the middle should be a pretty easy three Isaac's gonna go with the backhand he goes with the Anheuser route throws it perfectly Great shot from Isaac. Cody appears to be lining up that same route. Cody takes his a little too tight and catches a tree. He should be able to save a three from there though. It looks like he ended in the middle of the fairway. All right, so Dustin, I really was surprised Dustin wasn't throwing forehand on this hole, being that it was a pretty easy uh, hyzer forehand. But he actually tried to take that tight route up the right side and threw it right into one of those trees. I feel like if Dustin was a local uh, to this course, he would throw the forehand on this one every time. You actually see a lot of people throw the forehand up the tight route that Dustin through backhand that time so he's got a really tough tough spot here and he throws it into another tree Cody throws a pretty good up shot goes a little past the basket so Dustin having to go with back-to-back -back patent pending shots and there's my defender on the ground right there. 
I brought the cart this round uh, because it was supposed to rain and I had a new cameraman so I had to keep all the camera equipment in there too and keep it dry. This is not the uh, the best course to pull a cart around on or to push a cart on because there's so many little hills and roots and ditches everywhere. <laughs> not the best bid there. I was really trying to hit a nice ante line and have it float back to the right, but it came out and I still got a little work left for my par. Cody really needs to make this to save his par. Good putt from Cody. He's got a real scramble round going. He got beat up a little bit on hole two, but he's made good saves on back-to-back -back holes after getting a birdie on three. So I'm able to knock mine in there, save par. And there's Isaac. He is absolutely parked. So Isaac will card the only birdie hey, of the group. And we move on to hole six. I think Isaac's taking the tight route. I'm not positive. It looks like he was trying to take the tight route again. Yeah. We saw Matt Lag do that in the first round and he parked it. But that's the only shot we've seen be successful up that way so far. So I'm going with the defender again and I'm trying anything I can to get my hands dry. Absolutely killing me not having a birdie bag. I don't need it most times, but in Georgia in the summer, it gets so humid. Looks like I overcompensated for worrying about an early release and turned it over into a tree on the left and kicked me to the right. I'll have some work to do, but should have some kind of shot there to try and save for. Cody goes with the Anheuser shot and catches one of those trees. Now Dustin's going to throw the Heiser forehand. Oh, he smooths it out there too. I mean, that is the exact shot that he needed to throw on the last hole to get a park job instead of a four. Isaac was left in a weird spot. He probably should have went with a forehand there. Uh, tried to force the backhand and caught a tree. Here I am, stuck in a little, little ditch on the right-hand side. Going with a judge backhand for my upshot. That'll leave very little work to save the par. On the other hand, we got Isaac over here needs this to save par. And he's going to be taking his first bogey of the day. So through the first six holes, everyone except for myself has gotten at least a bogey on one hole. Cody needs this to save his par. Good putt from Cody. Park job birdie for Dustin. And we will move on to hole number seven, the other hyzer hole, blind hyzer hole. And that was Dustin there. So Scott once again decided to go halfway down the fairway and try to catch it from a different angle. That was my hatchet there, and it looked like it was coming in perfectly, and it's just a little wide. I caught that last tree on the corner that I think I hit two or three of the rounds. I believe that was uh, Cody. I'm not sure if that was Cody or Isaac going up that tight route there. Well, it appears it was Isaac. So now Isaac's going to need to find some kind of way to get out of these woods and get himself a putt for par. Otherwise, he's looking at back-to-back -back bogeys. After opening with three birdies in a row.
Isaac was four down through the first five. And he dropped back to three down. Oh, beautiful roller from Isaac. Needs to sit down, though. Takes the ramp and just keeps on cruising. Great out shot. Oh, wow, it never stopped. He rolled way down there. So all of a sudden, Isaac in a little bit of trouble. It's back-to-back -back bogeys for him. So the hatchet gets me to here. Leaves me with about 30 feet for birdie. Got a little bit of a weird stance. I remember not feeling very comfortable on this putt. Pushed it just a little to the right. So for the first time in this tournament, I go through holes five, six, and seven with without a birdie. Cody with the beautiful drive there gets an easy two. And Dustin also had a very nice drive, so he's putting for a two. So a couple twos, three and a four. And we move on to hole eight, the par four that turns a few times. And Scott decided to get halfway down the fairway. Maybe a third of the way down. Cody pulls it a little wide, catches a tree, but almost kicks him about back into the fairway. He's right on the edge. So now I've got Dustin, also going with the backhand hyzer layup, I believe. This is another hole that I feel like if Dustin was a local, he would be throwing a forehand. Um, because most of the locals throw a forehand and just try to get really aggressive. He also goes a little wide with his hyzer. Catches a tree. So I'm going to try to replicate that thumber that got me the eagle yesterday. See if I have any luck. Nope. <laughs> really didn't come out straight up and down like I'd planned. And hyzer, or not hyzer, it panned just a little bit early and caught that tree on the corner so Isaac's over here with the hyzer just like the rest of the group he throws it just a hair wide so I'm really in a bad spot here um, I mean it could be worse I could be in the pencil tree forest but I do have some kind of lie and not really a huge fan of anything I have to go with here, but I decided to get aggressive and throw a forehand roller with the hatchet. I wanted to throw a tomahawk, but I, my disc was like right up against that tree, or that tree was right behind my disc, so it was kind of a weird angle. The pin on this one actually moved from the right position to the left position, so that's why I'm going with the forehand roller. Oh man, I put it down at a good angle, but it hit that tree the last tree in the fairway there uh, with its flight plate and it turned it left straight into absolute deathville I've been in there before and it is not good so I joined the rest of the group and finding some trouble on the front nine looks like no one's gonna get out of here clean so Dustin has to go to a little patent pending maneuver Got a putter in his hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop in. Oh, Ooh, wow. great Under shot from Dustin. I feel like there's a lesson to be learned on this hole. We just saw all three of these guys pull their hyzers a little bit wide, and yet all three of them still have a shot to get up and down for birdie. So maybe going with the big thumber is not the smartest decision. So Cody lines up his second shot. 
Looks like he's got a mid range in his hand. That was a pretty good shot. Should should give him a putt for a uh, for a par there, or for a birdie rather. This is a par four. Isaac has a pretty straight approach. Whoa, big skip! It's a really fast green right behind the basket. So this is where I am trapped. Uh, there's really nothing. I look over to the left to see if maybe I could just pitch through to the walking path to the next hole and get a long putt, but there really wasn't. And there really wasn't a safe way just to putt it back to the fairway over here. This is about as long as you'll ever see me take on a, on a shot. So I'm going to go with a forehand roller with the judge. Might have to drop to a knee for it, I'm not sure. Just cannot find anywhere to get comfortable or what shot to throw. Sit. Able to sneak it Sit out there. Nice. Then it hits the tree by the basket and then rolls. So I think it would have curled up and had like a, I would have been like 30 feet below the basket. But it actually touched one of those small trees as it was sitting down and stood back up and rolled deeper into the wood line and then took a little right. So Cody has this for his birdie. Ooh, not the best place to air ball the screen is fast so I'm trapped back down in there there's not really any kind of look uh, the only possible thing is to take the dog disc and straddle out to a knee and try to putt it there's really it's too low of a ceiling to do anything actually had a pretty good line but caught a little bit of lettuce so I'm gonna be getting a five here which is a bogey but Feels a little worse because I got a two on this hole yesterday. I was having a pretty similar round uh, to my course record round until I took the three stroke worse uh, score on this hole. So Cody was in a weird spot and he tried to turbo putt and then it landed and rolled away. It's just having disaster on the screen. He still doesn't have a clean, clean, clear putt. And he's not able to put it in. So Cody's going to take his second six of the front nine. While Isaac and Dustin just but. tap in for threes. Good birdies from both those guys. And they just got some serious strokes back on us. We'll go to hole nine, our last hole of this front nine. Another par four. Once again, Scott... Started videoing from halfway up the fairway to get a better view and to see it from a different angle. Here's Isaac. Isaac and Dustin just throw perfect shots. They're right there beside each other in the middle of the fairway. I decided to go with the pain. And I aim at that tree in the middle because I, you know, assume I'm going to pull it just just the right side around it um, I think a little lack of speed maybe on that shot resulted in me catching the edge of that tree and kicking hard right Cody also with a brilliant shot so I'm not far off the fairway but I'm just far enough off the fairway to not have a good shot so that's what it looks like from back here up to the basket very good uh, filming there from Scott to show us what the uh, rest of this hole looks like so I'm trapped in here and basically all I can do is just step out as far as I can and try to lay up so I throw the compass and just try to lay up into the middle and I find myself in another pretty bad spot can't really go around because I'm pinned down by that tree right there in front of me. 
The only shot I really see here is the Thummer Roller. So I'm really hoping to get it clean all the way up there to the rocks maybe and give myself a long putt. Gave it a pretty decent line. Uh, it was turning back to the right, but it caught that big tree at the end. So I'm going to look at back-to-back -back fives if I can get up and down from there. And that is absolutely not how you want to finish this front nine. If I card a five here, that means I will score five strokes worse on hole eight and nine than I did yesterday in round two where I went eagle birdie. I'm looking at bogey bogey. All these other guys are eating it up. Watching the leader take a couple fives. Isaac throws one right up there and give himself a putt for a three. Chance to get four back on the leader in two holes. That is huge. Same for Dustin. If he's able to get a birdie here, these back-to-back -back birdies will really get him right back in the ball game. Beautiful shot from Dustin. Now Cody looking to bounce back from that double bogey. He got just a bit off the edge of the left side of the fairway, so it's going to force him into a forehand here. It's basically right where I was in round two. But going over to the right position. Beautiful forehand from Cody. I got about a 60 footer, really just trying to lay it up there, take my five and move on. Isaac went past the pin, so he's got a comebacker. Great birdie putt from Isaac. And Cody knocks in his birdie. Dustin makes his birdie to shoot a six under on the front nine with a bogey. So he only had one par there. So that'll bring Dustin to 22 under. And I'm going to shoot a one under on the front nine. And so that'll put me at 22 under also. So Dustin and myself are now tied for the lead. And Cody's one under on the front. We'll put him at 20. He's two behind us. Isaac shot three under there on the front. So he is only three behind us and so that will set up an interesting back nine for round three and then we have the final nine also so please check back for these videos thanks scott renz for filming thanks a latitude 64 for their support and please check back